when we hear the word discipline, yes, most of us would generally think about punishment, but discipline is actually a really good thing and it ultimately benefits the person being disciplined. It's something that God does and it's something that he commands us to do. There are so many scriptures that talk about discipline, but here's one that's particularly helpful from Hebrews. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who've been trained by it. Parents are ultimately responsible for disciplining their children. But during the kids' ministry time, you as a leader have the delegated authority. There should be consequences for bad behavior, but we are never wanting to punish or ostracize kids for that bad behavior. It can be challenging at times, so it's helpful to work in team and come alongside each other in this. The kids' ministry environment isn't a school environment, and we want to steer clear of the kids experiencing it in that way. After all, they spend five other days of the week at school, why would they want another one? But just because we want them to enjoy themselves doesn't mean that there shouldn't be boundaries. Setting boundaries as a leader is a proactive way of communicating to children what you expect of them in terms of behavior. It's actually a great opportunity to convey some of the heart of meeting together. Boundaries should be broad enough to cover all circumstances, yet clear enough to know when they've been crossed. They should be communicated to the kids often and reinforced consistently. Reinforcing boundaries doesn't have to put a damper on the room. We've chosen four boundaries that have been really helpful for us. They are not rules, but guidelines for behavior. If you don't have any boundaries in place yet, feel free to use these. First one is yes is yes, no is no. That means that as leaders, hold firmly to your yeses and nos. If you've asked them to do something, follow through with making sure that they do it. And if you've asked them not to do something and they still do it, make sure that there's consequences. The second one is respect everyone and everything. If a child isn't taking care of the supplies or if they're hurting another child with their words, this is a boundary that they would have crossed. The third boundary is care for others. We want our kids' ministry environments to be places where they experience the care of the Lord through each other. And lastly, have fun! That's an order! You can remind children of this boundary when they're breaking the rules and making it difficult for others to have fun. These boundaries are generic and may not be all the boundaries that you need to put in place in your kids' area. Once you've reinforced your general boundaries, there might be a few house rules that you'll need to put in place for your specific context. These could be rules such as only leaders allowed in the storeroom or no jumping on the couches or one of our camp favorites, no hairies with the fairies, <laughs> which basically means we don't want boys and girls to pair off together. An important way to manage discipline issues is through proactive discipline. That means that you reinforce boundaries as much as possible, even if you have to repeat them at the beginning of each lesson. It also means that you don't ignore bad behavior on any scale. We've given some more guidelines in the book on how to be proactive with discipline and how to use logical consequences. Go check some of those out and see how you could use them in your context. Remember what we said at the end there? Remember to have fun. Don't let a few kids misbehavior rob the entire time for everyone else. Managing discipline doesn't need to change the whole atmosphere in the room. While there are many examples of bad behavior, all situations can be categorized into two general types of discipline issues, and how to respond to them will depend on these. Firstly, there are ongoing smaller acts of disobedience. This could be disruptions during the teaching or running around while you're trying to explain a game. First, try to put a measure in place that will reduce negative behavior, such as one of the leaders that isn't teaching sitting next to a disruptive kid, or gently touching them on the shoulder while you're teaching. If they continue to misbehave, speak into that situation by telling the child how they are overstepping the bounds, reminding them that it's not pleasant for everyone if they continue to break the rules. If this continues, you or one of the other leaders can take them out of the class and speak to them, explaining that their behavior is unacceptable and then asking them why they did it. Remember the attitude of warmth and 
crouching to their level. Sometimes these moments can turn into great opportunities to speak into their lives. If they give an explanation of why they did it, tell them why it is still unacceptable and then affirm them by saying that you believe they are capable of doing better and that they are valued part of the group. Check out the book for more ideas on how to mediate the situation between two children. If the disobedience continues and your interventions aren't helping, you may take the child out of the class to their parents. Explain the full story to the parents and make sure the child and parents know that we do want them to come back in the future. Then there are once-off bigger acts of disobedience. This could be swearing, spitefully injuring someone else, or maliciously breaking something. These situations must be dealt with quickly and effectively. Remove the child from the group and find a place away from everyone if you can, but within view of other leaders. Explain to the child that their behavior is unacceptable and ask them why they did it. You may get long-winded excuses, but just remind them that no matter the reason, their behavior is still unacceptable. Explain to them that you have to take them to their parents and then explain the story to them. Your role is not to tell them how they should be raising their child. They just need to know the situation. Make sure that both the child and the parent know that the child is welcome to come back next Sunday. In more extreme circumstances, you may have to agree upon a time period of two to three weeks in which the child won't be allowed to come back. But this should only be used in an extreme case and where the child is not responding to any other form of discipline. No matter what, in any discipline scenario, never present yourself as cold or harsh. Managing your own temperament shows that you have the maturity to deal with the situation. If you feel that you can't manage the situation, ask another leader to help you. Always make sure that whenever you deal with any situation, follow-ups are key. Some follow-ups look different to others. You may need to follow up with the congregation coordinator about the situation so that they are aware of it and that they can keep tabs on the child. But follow-ups with parents are vitally important too. Checking in with parents about their child helps build relationships between you and them. After all, you're on the same team, remember? And it will help you to also know where the child is at. You can never go wrong with follow-ups. So let's remember that discipline is helpful, but also vital to our role as leaders. Let's not forget that.